welcome to the tea of the day today i have an interesting mix which is star anise with fresh tarragon rosemary and a touch of lemongrass hmm I'm I'm liking this. I'm not, not sure my face is saying, hmm, this is bad. No, I, I actually do like this. Um, I just think the balance is slightly off. I didn't use a ton of rosemary, but for some reason the rosemary is taking over. And I think part of what it is, is that the star anise, because the way it comes in, I actually needed to crush it up a little bit to let the flavor release a little bit easier for the tea purposes. Um, because it just doesn't brew as fast as the rosemary does, which rosemary doesn't need necessarily as long because it is very strong and very woody and doesn't need to go anything longer than five minutes. But the star anise being a spice, I think it needed to be crushed up a little bit to release the spice a little bit better. So um, if you're going to have some star anise like that and have it in the actual form that it comes in with its little starfishy looking thing, then you need to make sure you crush it up a little bit to release the flavors a little bit better, I think. And um, the tarragon is also getting the overwhelmed just a little bit by the rosemary, um, again, because it's a lighter one. But uh, I figured the star anise and the tarragon would complement each other very well because they both have a bit of a kind of l l licorice-y taste. And um, overall, this tea is still good. I just would want to blend it a little bit better because I would like to have those flavors come out just a little bit more and not have it just be the rosemary overwhelming everything, so. Hmm, but I've talked before a little bit about uh, anise seed, but star anise is just a little bit different. They are different things. Um, they come from different plants, but uh, star anise in particular is a good antifungal, which is supposed to be good for a variety of fungal uh, problems, including things like athlete's foot and jock etch and uh, yeast infections. Um, and it's also a good antibacterial, it's supposed to be good uh, cancer fighter, it's supposed to be good for lots of digestive problems, especially if you have it just after eating, it's supposed to help a lot with um, um, moving the food through and uh, helping uh, with bloating and gas problems that you can get from eating. Um, it's also supposed to be good for a natural flu fighter with, and good for colds and things like asthma and bronchitis, actually. Hmm. And oddly enough, it's a good hormone regulator on both sides which um, it's, they say it has an estrogenic effect, but they also say it's supposed to be good for male sex drive. I guess it's because it has uh, <laughs> um, the two uh, different uh, uh, things, like because it has the thymol and other things in there, that it helps with both sides for, because of different um, things that are in it. Um, so otherwise you'd think, how can it do both things? But apparently it can. So apparently it's good for male sex drive and it's also good for helping regulate menstruation and specifically also supposed to help in pregnant mothers help increase lactation. So there you go, um, star anise. That's my uh, spice of the day. It's not an herb, it's officially a spice. So remember that, but y'all have a great tea day.